Dundas Games, ha <laughs> ha! Hey folks, it's time for a guide I've been putting off for a long time. Yes, that's right, it's Lee Sin, the Blind Monk, the most requested guide on the channel. He's quite complicated, so I've been taking my time to research him, but I think I've got it down enough to share with you. Let's learn how to Lee Sin. Lee Sin is an assassin fighter badass. A perennial favorite on the pro scene, the blind monk excels in the early game, with high mobility and a kit chock full of utility. While most only have four, Lee has seven abilities, four normally, and three conditional ones after he's used Q, W, and E. Though seen primarily as a jungler and a top laner, Lee Sin has seen high level play as a mid laner and as a support as well. Like many of the other Ionian champions, Lee Sin is energy based. He doesn't have to worry about mana running out in the long term, but once it's all run out in a fight, all he can do is punch and kick till it comes back up. Lee Sin's passive is Flurry. In the tradition of D&D monks everywhere, he can unleash a series of punches and kicks in rapid succession. Whenever he uses an ability, Lee Sin's next two basic attacks within the next three seconds have bonus attack speed and restore energy for each one. With seven abilities to use, the monk can keep this up constantly. Proper management of this passive will significantly increase his damage output and increase his jungling speed. The blind monk's first Q is called Sonic Wave. He may be blind, but apparently that doesn't keep him from learning echolocation. He kicks out a wave of sound in a line, dealing physical damage to the first enemy hit and granting true sight of them for three seconds. Within those three seconds, Lee can hit Q again to cast Resonating Strike. The blind monk follows his sound wave, dashing to the target he marked with the first part to deal the same damage again with bonus damage equal to 8% of the target's missing health. If it's a minion or monster, the damage from resonating strike is capped at 400. The combination of sonic wave and resonating strike make for a strong engagement tool, an execute thanks to the bonus damage, and even an escape letting you dash to minions or monsters that are far from the fight. While it is a thin skill shot, and there's always the risk of hitting the wrong target with it, an aggressive Lee Sin will want to take this early and max it out first. For the blind monk, W is the safety button. With safeguard, Lee Sin dashes toward a target ally. If the ally is a champion, they and Lee Sin receive a shield for a few seconds, and the cooldown for safeguard is halved. And that includes targeting himself. He'll get the shield and the reduction, he just won't go anywhere. Regardless of how he uses it, within the next three seconds, he can cast Iron Will. I suppose we just needed a reference to another D&D feat, didn't we, Ryan? When activated, Iron Will gives Lee Sin bonus lifesteal and spell vamp for four seconds. No bonus to will saves, but one heck of a bonus to sustain. Between Safeguard and Iron Will, a low health Lee Sin can dive into the jungle and come back out near full. Oh, and did I mention that Spell Vamp works with Smite? Heck yeah! In addition to the obvious ability to also jump to minions, Safeguard also lets Lee Sin jump to wards. This is an extremely useful ability that we'll talk about more later, but all in all, much like his Q, Safeguard can be used both defensively and offensively, keeping him alive throughout a fight and positioning him exactly where he needs to be. Whatever you're building with Lee Sin, be sure to max out your W second, or perhaps first if you're having trouble sustaining in lane or need to shield your allies more. With his E, Mr. Free Win unleashes the Tempest. He slams the ground, dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies and granting true sight of each of them for four seconds. Strange how the blind guy grants so much vision, innit? If he does hit an enemy, Lee Sin can cast Cripple within the next three seconds. Not sure how he does it, but when he activates it, he cripples all marked enemies still within range, significantly slowing their movement speed for four seconds, which decays over the duration. Simple, but effective. This is my weapon of choice on Lee Sin in the top lane. It deals lots of damage early on, is consistent, and makes your Qs that much easier to hit with the slow. It grants great wave clearing and a good chunk of damage to groups during a team fight. So, in a solo lane where you'll be pushing a lot and possibly plan to be split pushing, max this one out first. 
However, if you are jungling or roaming a lot, you'll be relying more on the mobility of the other two skills, so max this one out last instead. With his ultimate, Dragon's Rage, Lee Sin does his best Chuck Norris impression. He sends a powerful roundhouse kick straight to his target's face, dealing significant physical damage and sending them flying away from him. Enemies that his target collides with take the same damage and are knocked airborne for a second. Strong kick, eh? And just like any other Energy Champion's ultimate, this one is free to cast. Dragon's Rage is a fantastic tool, knocking a tank back into the enemy team, knocking a squishy target into your team, using it to disengage, or just to deal a ton of damage. Take a point in this one every chance that you can. For summoner spells, I can always recommend Flash for Lee Sin. Precise positioning is key, and Q and W are good, but having that third option is very, very useful. If you're jungling, take Smite. Ignite is good if you're confident and plan on going for lots and lots of early kills. Teleport is great for ganking, particularly from top lane where you're usually far from the early action. Exhaust is a nice option when you're up against a really bad matchup or if you're planning to play support and want to be providing more assistance for the carry. Runes are pretty straightforward. Take attack damage marks and quintessences. These give a strong early boost where Lee Sin operates best and synergize well with his spells and built-in attack speed boost. Take armor seals and magic resist glyphs, mixing flat and scaling versions to your own needs. As for masteries, grab 2190 or 9210. The obvious differences here are a trade-off between maximum aggression early on for a hopeful snowball, or safer play leading to a more survivable late game. Personally, I prefer the defensive route, but that's up to you. Note in the offensive version, we grabbed spell weaving and blade weaving. These synergize extremely well on Lee Sin between his passive and his mini spells. Start the game with a Hunter's Machete if you're jungling, but in a lane, you have choices. Longsword, Cloth Armor, Doran's Blade, and Doran's Shield are all options depending on your matchup. And, if you're supporting, get a Relic Shield. You'll also want to start the game with a Warding Totem Trinket. I know that's pretty standard for most people, but Lee Sin has synergy with it. Remember that Safeguard can hop towards? That includes this one. In the early game, Lee Sin is all about aggression, beating the enemy team as fast as he can, getting kills, and hopefully snowballing. He starts to fall off in power once the enemy are able to start buying defenses against him, at which point he transitions into more of a tank. To that end, as a jungler, you'll prefer to get a Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Adding that true damage to his already aggressive kit is a scary thing indeed. Your first item as a solo laner, and possibly your second as a jungler, should probably be a Ravenous Hydra. This will give you a lot of sustain, an extra spell to your burst damage, and combine with Tempest for some phenomenal wave clear. After this, unless you're beating the enemy really hard, it's time to start tanking it up. A popular next item on the agenda is a Sightstone. It's like having that totem we started with, plus four more. And, of course, since you'll have all the wards you'll ever need here, switch to a Sweeping Lens Trinket. If you choose not to buy a Sidestone, just be sure to keep wards in your inventory as much as possible. Good advice for anyone, but great advice for Lee Sin. For boots, I recommend either Mercury Treads in general, or Ninja Tabi against physical damage heavy teams. Renduin's Omen and Banshee's Veil are efficient, powerful defenses to round out your kit. Guardian Angel is just all around strong and very important for the late game when death timers are long. Locket of the Iron Solari is really good if the enemy team has multiple casters that your team needs help against, and Sunfire Cape is a good second option if the attack damage is strong with them. Alternatively, if you're kicking butt the whole game through, you could skip all that tankiness and just go for maximum damage. Last Whisper is very strong with Lee Sin's spells and might be a good second or third item for you to take. Bloodthirster is very strong as well, not quite as nice as Ravenous Hydra at the moment, but still very good. Black Cleaver is fantastic, letting you cast your spells more often while shredding them down. 
Trinity Force grants you tons of damage and also helps you stick on top of the enemy if you weren't already. Lastly, Maw of Malmordius. An early Hex Drinker is a great option to take if you're having trouble with a mage in lane, and this late game evolution just seals the deal. Being an energy based champion, Lee Sin can start his jungle from either the blue or red buff. Typically, you'll prefer to start at whichever one is farthest from your first ganking target. Kill the first buff, kill a small camp, and take your second buff. And then, since you're level 3 and have all of your abilities, gank! Lee Sin has really strong ganks, thanks to his many gap closers and the slow from Cripple. Gank early, gank often, and when possible, avoid using your gap closing abilities until absolutely necessary. When following them with Resonating Strike, wait until they've already blown their escapes as it will let you travel with them. And don't forget your passive. Whether you're ganking or clearing monsters in the jungle, that bonus attack speed is very important for getting as much damage in as you can. Hold off on using your abilities all at once if you can avoid it so that you can use both flurried attacks. Word jumping is a very important skill for every good Lee Sin to learn. Dropping a ward and immediately jumping to it with Safeguard is like having flash up every 14 seconds. It goes wherever you want, over walls and behind enemies. Turn on quick casting and hop into a bot match perhaps just to practice this and get a good feel for it. Between Q and W, escaping from fights and dashing across the map is a breeze. Your enemies will have a very hard time keeping up with you when you can dash across the map at will. In this case, think of monsters not as targets to kill, but as points to jump to. Even the dragon is a quick kick away. There are a number of key combinations that you should memorize when playing as Lee Sin. The first, your easiest high damage combo, is quite simply QRQ. -Q. Target them with Sonic Wave, knock them away with your Dragon's Rage, and follow afterwards with Resonating Strike. Since the Dragon's Rage deals tons of damage, your Resonating Strike will be massively improved as it increases based on their missing health. If at all possible, knock them back towards your tower, maybe they'll get some extra damage in for you. Add in Tempest and Cripple before that particular combo if you can. The crippling slow will make your sonic wave much easier to hit, and of course, more damage is always good. In teamfights, Lee Sin typically isn't the best source of damage in your team. He is a lot to be sure, but other champions scale better than him. So one of the best things he can do is isolate a target and send them back to his team for them to crush. Either flash or ward hop behind them and press R to knock them back the way you came. Lee Sin's tankiness in the late game will typically leave him just fine sitting amongst the enemy, but sometimes you'll want to follow your target back. In that case, a ward hop followed by your QRQ combo will not only send the target back, but you along with it right to safety. Variations on this move are often called an insect, thanks to that particular player's skill with Lee Sin in the competitive scene. The most famous, and possibly most difficult, is to dash to them with Q from a distance, immediately ward hop behind them, and knock them back toward your team. Practice it and give it a try. Alternatively in team fights, you can use your R defensively, keeping their initiators off your allies. Did the Malphite dive into your team? Knock him back from whence he came. Remember that if they hit their teammates, it'll knock them skyward too, allowing your team to dive in and clean up. With his many tools, skill shots, and nuances to his kit, Lee Sin can be a very complicated champion, with lots of split-second decisions that differentiate the good from the great. But if you can get him down, you will lead your team to victory. So thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed this guide, please let me know by hitting the like button. Speak up in the comments below if you have advice or questions, we're all here to learn. Subscribe for future stuff like guides, gameplay, and general silliness. Follow me on Twitch for streams and Twitter and Facebook to see what else is going on. Till next time, I've been Gin, and you've been watching me talk about a video game. Now get to practicing. Force is meaningless without skill. Listen, blind monk, don't stop. I can
dispel your fear from a mile away. I got four senses to work with, but that's four more than I need to take your life today. You all know the way I play. You better pray I don't get federally. No chance. I'm like a fat man at a breakfast buffet. I'll dance a death belly through the corpses of your whole team. The theme of this match is the extreme death of your entire regime. You can see clearly I'm the best. Well, I can clearly hear your cardiac arrest when this dragon's rage destroys your chest.